You're listening to Petrified. This episode, roll over. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me down the back? Just messing. Just messing. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Brian and Noreen and Nula and Shay. F- fabulous turnout. Uh, well, Babbage Books has a real treat in store for you today. All the way from the UK. Uh, fresh from the overwhelming success. Overwhelming, uh, whelming success of her latest novel, A Princely Sum. Please welcome the acclaimed, the, the novelist, Diana Dubray. Um, you haven't given me the mic. Hmm? Oh, I took the mic with me. Apologies, here you go. Thanks so much. So yes, I'm Diana Dubray, as you know. I'm a writer of romantic hysterical fiction. I'm so happy. Historical fiction. I'm so happy to be here and grateful to Mr. Crappage for the invite. It's Babbage. Babbage. (laughs) Mr. Babbage. Yes, so um, I thought I'd begin with a reading from my new novel and then we can open up the floor to the four of you with any questions you might have. So, a princely sum. So, the night was moist. The kind of wet heat you get when you take your towel from the washing machine. Veronique was like a wild cat that got stuck in a room when the door swung shut from a draught. She paced, leapt from chair to chair. Her downy upper lip was proper damp, but hark heavy boots on the stairs. Hugo? He opened the door and his shirt at the same time, pausing only to plonk his boots on the mat. Veronique? He uttered. Is Betty out for the night? In response, Veronique stood, her housecoat slipping from her heaving shoulders, leaving her revealed, absolutely not a scrap on her. Hugo lunged, his hands knew where to go, and as for his mouth... Uh, uh, Miss Dubray, that's not the segment I thought you were going to read. I pulled out the bookmark on the way to the mic, I'm sorry. Right, um, have... Have we any questions? Nula? She? So. This is hell. Oh, sorry. I forgot I was holding the mic. Will we leave it? Oh, you've dropped your book. I'll just... Ow! Oh, my head. Can I give you this microphone? Where's the toilet? What's that? I said, where's the toilet? that bad a section. It was sexy. How do I get out of here without bumping into? Oh, hello. Sorry, I thought I had the bathroom to myself. Hello? I'm not going back. Ah, you shook me so first. You can't make me. Are you all right? Oh, my head. The pain! I can't stand it! No, 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 no. Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! Help! Help! Somebody! Oh! Uh, miss, are you okay? What's wrong? There's someone in the bathroom. She's very sick. She needs help. Really? There's no one in there. It's empty. You did not write a princely song. 
I sure did. I love that book. Oh, oh, thanks very much. Gosh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm turning red. So good. You feeling better after your shock? Well, this coffee is certainly helping. Good for the nerves. Oops, red light. Oh, poop. It spilled all down your bib. It's a ruffle. I'm not wearing a bib. Probably would have been handier if you were. Oh! You've done it again! Oh, the cup must nearly be empty now. My chest is scalded! Pull the bib away from your skin. Here. This, th- um, <clears throat> that's the, that, that's my, um, that's my hotel. Just there. Just here. Oh, balls! Oh, again. It's empty now. Well, <laughs> Terry, thanks for the lift. God, you've lovely eyes. I... I do? Your bifocals really make them stand out. <laughs> Thank you. If I... If I took them off, I'd probably walk out in front of a car. That bad? Very. Could you maybe take them off for a moment? Yeah, sure. So pretty. Funny the way your eye goes in like that. It's trying to focus. Cute. Hey, how many fingers am I holding up? Where's your hand? You really are blind. Can I put them back on? Of course. Oh, there you are. Hey, um, <clears throat> could I ask you, what's your favourite part of my book? It's just, I don't meet many fans. I'd have to say the bit with the house coat. When Hugo ties Veronique's hands together with the sleeve. Sure, that. It's a steamy scene. How do you come up with your ideas? No one's ever asked that before. Well, they come to me at all times of the day, pop into my head unannounced. I could be feeding the gecko crickets, putting on a wash, and these romantic scenes, you know, flood the synapses. You really describe that so well. The book group would love you. You're in a reading group. I sure am. Hey, I just had a wizard of an idea. Would you maybe like to do another reading for the group? They'd love it. I'd be a hero. Oh, I don't know. Oh, please. You'd be guaranteed an appreciative audience this time round. Those four didn't seem to think I was up to much. Ah, they haunt that place. You'd quicker get a rise out of a statue. The book group actually like books. Not like those fuddy duddies at Babbage's who just turn up to get out of the cold. I wouldn't be bothering anyone, would I? Are you on drugs? They'll practically eat you up. Um, I don't think I can say no. Perfect. Let's go so. If it's all right, Terry, I'm just going to get changed first. I'm pretty drenched. Of course. Your poor bib. I can get a taxi and follow you if you give me the address. No, no. I'll wait. (laughs) Are you heading out, Mr. Bray? Oh, yes, I am. Did you have any more trouble with your room key? <gasps> no, no, it seems to be working fine now. Sorry, I don't know how I um managed to snap it in the lock when I was turning it. That's okay, these things happen. I like your dress. It's very frilly. <gasps> oh, I like things that look like they're from a different time. Success. Speaking of which, Mr Bray, this might seem odd, but would you mind if I asked you something? Oh, no, not at all. Would you mind awfully coming up to the counter? I don't want the new manager to overhear he's a blow-in. Okay, sure. I wouldn't want you to get into trouble. Is everything all right? That lamp is replaceable, isn't it? I just turned like this and my elbow seemed to catch it. Oops, sorry. I'll just move that. You're very patient. I can be an awful disaster. You're very sweet, Mr. Bray. That's actually why I wanted to say something. Is that car outside waiting for you? Where? That, yes. Do you know the person in it? Not really. Just a nice man who gave me a lift home from the bookshop. You're going back out to him? He's invited me to do another reading of my novel to his book club. I... Well, actually, I have a few spare copies, if you'd like one. Oh, please. And sign it for me. Do you know his name? Terry something. I'm such a bore, usually. I never go out. Just me and my novels. 
did I tell you I'm writing a sequel to my book? Napoleon's in it. Do you know him? Y- yes, the leader of the French Republic. Oh no, I meant Terry in the car. Oh, uh, I, I know the car. It's very distinctive, memorable, because it looks so old. But not a banger. Like it's been kept well, or hardly used. If you're a fan of classic cars, I could ask Terry if you could take a look inside. I have no intention of getting into that car. I don't understand. The last time I saw that car was about 12 years ago. In the exact same state it's in now, if my memory isn't playing tricks. In that same spot. We had a guest here, a quiet woman. She left in it. And didn't come back. Did she go missing? No. She rang a week later, told us we could throw away all her things, she she wouldn't be needing them, settled the bill. That's unusual for sure, but still... When she called, I said to her I hoped that she hadn't been unsatisfied with her stay and that I hoped we'd see her again in the future. And she replied, there is no hope, and she hung up. Shiver's gone right up my back. If you decided to stay in tonight, Miss Dubray, I could give you some drink vouchers for the bar. I don't drink, but thank you. And thank you for your thoughtfulness. Perhaps I'll just go out and tell Terry I've changed my mind. I could do that for you. Oh, I couldn't. He'd think I was rude. Please, it's fine. Don't you look fancy. Terry, I'm afraid there's been a change of plan. I found ahead. The group are so excited. Do you know, quite a few of them already have copies of a princely sum. Do they really? June said she's almost finished it. She went wild when I said you were coming. It's quite the coup. Can I ask something strange, Terry? Um, how old are you? How old am I? 26. So... Twelve years ago, you would have been fourteen. Good math. Is this your dad's car? No. I got it last year at a police auction. A police auction? Is something wrong? Actually, you know what? I don't think so. Will we go? Whoop, whoop. Hop on in. your dress will get a few admirers. This old thing. We love anything vintage. Hence, my get up. I love your fashion sense. This is us. How decadent. Such a big drive. It's nice being so far back from the main road. You can't hear the traffic. <coughs> Are you all right? I'm just, I'm just a little nervous. What section will I read? Um... I hope your friends won't be disappointed. Impossible. I know I might come off very confident, but I'm actually rather shy. Here, uh, you can see the house coming up through the trees. Look, over here. Oh, isn't that nice? You had the door closed on your dress. Poop! Oh, don't open the door. You might fall out. I wouldn't put it past me. Do you know, last summer I leaned against a patio door, except it wasn't a patio and it wasn't a door. I mean, I didn't know where to look. What was it then? Just an opening in the side of a building. I tumbled down ten concrete steps. Were you a clumsy kid? A clumsy twin. There were two of us in it. Oh, really? Are you travelling with your twin? No, poor Charlie passed away a few years ago. He'd been sick for a long time. I took care of him. I miss him terribly. Diana and Charles. Quite the combo. He used to do magic tricks. Was he good? Dire. Like, properly shocking. He did make a rabbit disappear once. A reversal trick. Put the rabbit in the hat. And where did the rabbit go? Dunno. Huh. Did your family gather around when he passed to comfort you? It was just us. We grew up in care. That's sad. So no one's waiting for you back at the hotel? Only my new novel. (laughs) It's a sequel. You wouldn't believe what Veronique gets up to. 
She's mad. So no one's waiting for you. Great. You can stay late. And here we are. Oh. Look at all the cars. Quite the collection, right? They all look like classic cars. Like this one. It's like a museum. All from auctions. Police auctions. Exactly. Ready? Are you coming? Terry, people live here, don't they? It looks derelict. Diana, don't let June know you said that. It's her family home. Listen, uh, between you and I, it does look a little like it's been left to go to pot. That's how these eccentric rich folk carry on. The back garden is a disaster. Don't tell June I said that. Oh, I won't. I don't want to embarrass anyone or anything. I, I won't say our house is horrible. You know, from a princely sum, you should definitely read them the house coat section. Not too steamy. I don't want to inspire an orgy. Oh, you dirty devil. <laughs> <clears throat> Speaking of steamy, you're sweating. Am I? It's a little close. Like a wet towel pulled from a washing machine, right? What? From the book. You know, for the sequel I mentioned. Veronique is going to go to Elba. You know, Abel was I here, I saw Elba. The palindrome. Napoleon says it to his physician while in captivity on St. Helena, the island. Fascinating. I think a plot like that sells itself. That's a plot? That's not a plot. How do you mean? You really are some tulip. Oh. Ah. What's wrong? Gosh, you're doubled over. Where's the pain? My stomach, obviously. Obviously, Diana. You know, Charles and I used to sing a little song whenever he got really ill. It would help distract him. I could sing it for you now. My head is pounding. It's a very memorable air. If your belly starts to grumble, oh my God, what is the pain? <laughs> what was that? Your ears playing tricks. I didn't even say it was a sound, so you heard it too. Oh God. Oh God. I can't take it. <laughs> Terry, my goodness. Who's that at the window? <laughs> oh, this is really odd. I shouldn't have come. Diana. <laughs> Diana! What? Diana, I have the keys. I suppose I'll just have to use the two legs God gave me. Wait, wait. I'm sorry I snapped at you. A, a wave of nausea just came over me. You scared me and I want to go home. If you're in no fit state to drive me, throw me the keys. The book club are so excited to see you. I could tell by the way they were hammering at the windows. Look, here's the keys. Take the keys. But just talk to me first. This is really dreadful how it's turning out. It, it was supposed... Give me the keys. It was supposed to be a lovely afternoon. Throw them on the ground. A group of friends hearing their literary idol read from her greatest novel. Even I'm not that deluded. Here. Take them. I asked you to throw them. They're right there. I'm going to take them. Stay where you are. You take the keys, and I'll take your glasses. Oh! <coughs> oh, oh, I can't see! I can't see! I'm sorry, I just couldn't let you run off when all this has been a misunderstanding. Give me my glasses now! If you run, you won't make it ten feet. Help! Help! No one will answer. We have the wildest parties, and no one ever complains. Will you listen? I'll listen if you give them it's not my car, so I can't just hand it over. It's it's Jane's car. If you help me into the house, then Jane can drive you. Or we can call you a taxi and I promise we'll stay in the house and you can wait out here. I'm going to pick up a stone or a brick. Or... Go ahead. There's one on the ground on your left. We are all going to feel very silly about this in an hour. Got it. I swear I'll bring you. I'm coming closer. I'm reaching out. And that's me. And here's your glasses. You horrible beast! Oh, God! 
the pain. I can't bear to see someone suffer. Come on then. Here's the key for the door. Lean yourself against it while I open it. It's... It seems to be stuck. You push it, don't pull it. Oh. Go on. Of your own accord. I won't force you. That's it. Now close it behind us. Hurry! There's nothing wrong with you, you dirty faker. Mm, it's because we're in the house. That's made me better. Come on, let's meet the group, shall we? Hold on, that wasn't the deal. There's bottles and rubbish everywhere, and streamers. And birthday banners? Did you have a party? Well, that's all we ever do. Here's the group. Are... are they all asleep? They're just pretending for old time's sake. There is no sleep. There's June. Hey, our guest of honour is here. Terry, with the lady of the hour, Diana. I am both charmed and incredibly grateful. You've made us all feel so much better. They wouldn't be lying about pretending to sleep if it wasn't for you. They'd be tearing at their own stomachs. May I shake your hand? Uh, <clears throat> not at the moment. I'd better be off, actually. Can I get you a cocktail? I was just preparing one for myself. The glasses are all filthy. Believe me, you'll stop caring after a while. I don't drink. <laughs> Give it a while. Soon you'll down anything you can get your hands on. Would you like to dance? No. My feet are moving of their own accord. I just have to. I'll dance with you. I thought as much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate you so much, Terry. You're ugly, stupid face. Sometimes I fantasize about getting a power drill and putting my foot on the back of your neck to hold you down and then pushing it into your skull. <laughs> well, sweet cheeks, I'd love to tie you to a chair and hold a blowtorch to you until the skin peels back from your body. <laughs> so sick of each other. I need to use the bathroom. I don't feel right. You're acclimatizing. It's just through there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, there's someone in the bath. Yes, Abigail. Well, you could have told me before I disturbed her. You can't disturb her. She's dead. What? Have another peep. Her face is turning black. <laughs> tell me something I don't know. I'd say she's been dead for days. Hence you, dear. You see, two's company, three's a crowd, but nine's a party. There has to be nine. Quick, make drinks before the next song comes on. I'm parching. Do you want a drink, Diana? Can you call that taxi for me? We should drag Abigail down to the cellar soon. She's really beginning to reek. I said, do you want a drink, Diana? I want to go home. Poor thing. What will we make her? Mm, something sweet. Something you'd drink if you were a teenager and it was your first drink. Hello. What happened? You tell me. I got to the door, but when I opened it, this wave of fear came over me. I felt as if if I was to go outside, it would be the worst thing in the whole world. That's called self-preservation. Here, drink this. Thank you. Oh, I thought that was water. You spilled it all down the front of your apron. It's a dress. Is it? I call the style Victorian flamenco. It's like you're trying to shoplift doilies. Well, 
you have a dead woman in your bath. Oh yeah, you have a dead woman in your bath. Hold on, don't get up, wait, wait. I've your feet tied to the bed with a housecoat. What did you do that for? Terry said you're mad about housecoats in your books. You never even read them. Kel surprise. I meant why did you tie me up? In case you fell out and hurt yourself. The irony. You're all tangled up in the sheets. Come here. Let me untie your feet. You can do a lot with house coats. You won't beat me, June. Lifting a fully grown man in and out of bed builds up your muscles. So stop struggling. I'm going to loosen this now and you're going to explain to me exactly what's going on. If you agree, say yes or make a choking sound. <gasps> now, there we go. I suppose I had that coming. Oh, it was actually a bit thrilling after all this time. You don't have to choke me. I'll tell you everything. I suppose the way to start, have you heard about this house before? Marsh Breeze. No, I'm from England. Oh, really? Anyway, I'm not choking you anymore, so you can take your head up out of my lap. This dress is so comfortable. Right, we'll power through this before the music starts up again. Basically, you'll never be able to leave this party or you'll die. And then again, you'll be at this party until you die. It's the ultimate rollover. What? Yep, I've been here 12 years. Oh, are you the lady who rang the hotel and said... There is no hope. Did they remember me? Oh, that's so sweet. Are you on drugs? Nope, no drugs. No food, even. Only drink and music. Exactly what Edward Lockwood loved at a party. Do you like parties? If this is one, it's my first. Apart from birthday tea parties with Charles. Shame. You'll be sick of it soon enough. Old Lockie loved a party. He hated having to end it. He'd have the servants hide the clocks in Marsh Breeze so people wouldn't know it was long past time to go home. You couldn't rest. He'd go round the room pulling people up to their feet to dance. Up, up! There'd be a never-ending supply of booze. The parties were infamous. So much fun. Until they became exhausting. And it just never stopped. And now it can't. Are you going to drink the bit of the drink you didn't spill? I am not. Pass it over. Well, you'll have to take your head off my lap now. You'll spill it. Fine. Ah, <sighs> Two's company, three's a crowd, but nine's a party. There has to be nine people here at all times, or the pain starts. You can't leave the house, or the pain starts. Imagine the worst hangover you've ever had, coupled with the worst dose of the fear you've ever had. Now, multiply that by a thousand. It feels like the world is ending. It feels like your body is going to be ripped apart. You can try to leave, but you'll come back because of the pain. And you can't ever sleep. And you can't refuse to dance. Is this hell? Kind of. Take your favourite thing and repeat it all day, every day, with no ending. Party until you die. I don't know if it's a spell Lockie put on the house, a curse, a bargain he made with something supernatural. I never bothered to look it up. How long has this been going on for? Lockie died in 1901, so before that at least. Why me? Because Abigail died. Someone needed to brave the pain and get a ninth. Abigail had been here 17 years. Terry holds the record now. He actually brought me too caught me like a little fish. I was so angry with him at the start. But once you feel the pain for the first time, you'll forgive anyone what they need to do to make it stop. But why me? In earlier years, we try and get the most fun, the most interesting, the wittiest people to keep the party going. Socialites, stars, comedians. Well, now it seems any old fool will do. That's very mean. Facts are facts. Well, if I'm stuck here... I'm going to make it my kind of party. Come on. I suppose I'd better go down and see the type of people I'll be spending eternity with. What do you mean, your kind of party? Hi, everyone.
everyone. I'd like to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, I am Diana Dubray, a hysterical novelist from England. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get to meet you all in the years to come. Well, I have just discovered that I've locked out. I have the one thing I always wanted, a captive audience. Oh! Oh, sorry, I've stood on your toe. So, if you'd all like to make yourselves comfortable, we'll begin. A princely sum. Chapter One The day was languid. Veronique felt torpid. Her embroidery was really getting on her wick. There was only one thing for it. <clears throat> she wrapped her housecoat around her and prepared to face the day. Ow! Mostly she could get herself out of her fog with a spot of stargazing. But alas, it was day. Ouch! <laughs> There was only one thing for it. Hugo was going to get a right good seeing to. Ow! Ow! Ah! Uh, June, are you starting to get a headache? <laughs> Pounding, and my stomach is in a knot. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Diana? Hmm? I'm reading here. Uh, how do you feel? Absolutely wonderful. Starving, though. Did you have a coat? No, why? Come on, I'll, uh, I'll give you a lift back to your hotel. It uh, turns out you're not fit for parties. Get someone cool this time, Terry, before my body rips itself apart. <laughs> Hurry, please. Uh, I'm sweating. Maybe that lovely receptionist will still give me those drink vouchers. I could get a nice cup of breakfast tea. You're moving even faster than me. It's excitement, Terry. I can't wait to get back to the hotel and get stuck into the sequel. I just had the most marvellous idea. Rollover starred Anna Shields McNamee as Diana, Steve Murray as Terry, Margaret McAuliffe as June, and Dunica O'D as Babbage and the hotel receptionist. It was written and directed by Peter Dunn and produced and edited by Liam Geraghty. You can keep updated with all things Petrified on Twitter and Instagram at Petrified underscore pod. Petrified is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.